All right, back to the data directory. I do believe this is our second to last thing that we're going to talk about. Load config. And this is kind of just a miscellaneous place where there's some miscellaneous stuff that I'm only talking about because it's security relevant. So again, there's a time date stamp. Not going to be filled in. Otherwise, I'd be like, yeah, there's another time date stamp. What we care about is security cookie, table, uh, SE handler table, and SE handler count. First of all, the security cookie and SE handler table, those are both absolute virtual addresses. Again, you see as we get towards the end here, we've got lots of absolute virtual addresses and offsets that are relative to the start of its own data structure instead of the RBAs. But. And here's the 64-bit version of that. So the security cookie, absolute virtual address, and it will be fixed up by the relocation information. So there will be a relocation entry that says if you randomize this thing in memory, make sure you fix up that header. And what it is, is it the location where the stack cookie that's used with the GS flag will be stored. Uh, there's a single stack cookie that gets randomized at the beginning. Bill, can we go over to the board? And so for those of you, I think this is talked a little bit maybe in the intro, x86, or intro exploits class or not, but you know, just um, the general canonical way that you stop buffer overflows is that, well, the way that you do buffer overflows is you'll have a saved EIP on the stack. So this is going to be low. This is going to be high memory. And so the stack grows towards low memory. And so we've got saved EIP, saved EDP. And so these are registers, x86 registers. And then you've got your local variables, local vars. Right? And so what happens when you have a buffer overflow is that you know you've got one local variable here that maybe takes user input and the code is wrong so it allows the user to put too much input and so while the stack grows low to high code writes happen from sorry well the while the stack grows towards low addresses you know memory writes go from low addresses to high addresses so when you're doing uh, you know string copy or mem copy or whatever String copy copies data from some input buffer that the attacker is giving stuff to you from. Attacker data comes in here and he writes and he writes and he writes until he finally overflows one local variable and he keeps writing and he's overflowing other local variables and eventually he's overflowing and he keeps going and depending on how the copy is set up depends on how far he's able to write and stuff like that. And so the canonical way that you exploit a buffer overflow is you overwrite this instruction pointer that's saved so that it points at, you know, somewhere down into here where you've got attacker code that's embedded. And so uh, basically when this variable is done and it's cleaning up its stack and it's popping the EIP off the stack, it goes back into here and it goes and executes attacker code. The GS compiler flag is for stack cookies or security cookies or for stack canaries. It's called a lot of different things. And all it is is that the compiler will basically put in a random value right here. So it'll put a, a random value between your saved stuff and your local variables so that if the attacker starts smashing local variables trying to get up to this EIP, between the EIP and between the local variables, there's going to be a cookie that's a random value that happens to be selected based on this uh, virtual address that's uh, given here. That's, that's a location where when the OS starts the program, it takes that virtual address and it plops a random value into there for this particular program. And then inside of the code when it's calling functions that it thinks are going to be potentially uh, buffer overflow when it sees there's a string copy in a function or if it sees there's a mem copy, it does some heuristics and it says, if I think this is going to be vulnerable and if you've got the GS flag set <coughs> in your compiler, then it'll insert this cookie uh, D word of random value so that when you return and when you're cleaning up off of this thing and you're removing the local variables and you're about to pop off this, first you check the cookie and you say, is this still that same random value that's stored in memory there? So basically there's a little bit of code at the beginning that pushes a random value from there onto the stack and there's a little bit of code at the end that takes the value, reads it off and compares it against what's in memory at the security cookie virtual address. And so that's how they, uh, they check the cookies in order to make sure that no one's buffer overflowed this uh, program. So that's uh, security cookie. And the SE handler table, this has to do with uh, the safe SEH. 
flag, what linker flag. And this is also meant to be an exploit mitigation thing. I kind of mentioned it before. There's the save the IP on the stack, but if you go farther, you'll eventually hit the structured exception handler information. And this is how Windows handles when particular error conditions occur. And so the structured exception handler will be a function pointer where it'll say, if it's this type of exception, execute this function. And so it's just another thing that the attacker can overwrite on the stack. So the SE handler table is supposed to be something where you're pre-programming into your binary. These are the exception handlers which may be called. And no other exception handler except these may be called. So if an attacker buffer overflows and writes their own function pointer into one of those sec structured exception handler entries, the OS will be checking, well, I'm about to call this exception because something bad happened, but let me first check that against this table here. And so that's the point of the SE handler table. And the count is basically just uh, how many of these uh, things the OS needs to check through before it determines, yes, this is a valid exception handler, or no, it's not. And so unfortunately, that is not a foolproof mechanism. And both of those can be bypassed, basically. But, uh, but that's where that information comes from. All right, so safe SEH. There used to not be a linker option for it. Now I believe there is actually in 2010 and newer or something like that. And GS has been there for a while. It's on by default now. I think safe SEH may be on by default as well now. But, uh, but basically you just, in your compiler options, you set the GS flag. You set yes and then it'll turn on the GS flag. And then the, the compiler will do heuristics in order to say. So it's actually kind of interesting. Some buffer overflows that you see still they're in things that have the GS flag set, but the heuristics failed and they said, we don't think that this particular function is vulnerable. And so they didn't add the cookie to that function and they just turned out to be wrong. So they, they improved the heuristics on that over time so that they see, you know, oh, well, we really should have considered this as a potentially exploitable case. But the point is they're trying to not put that everywhere because again, it's just a performance versus security trade-off. They could put it checking everything, but if you go into a leaf node function and all it does is add A plus B and then it returns back, that's never going to have a buffer overflow in it. So you could add it everywhere, but you really want to trade it off so that you're not doing this extra push and then pop when you don't have to be. It's not just push and pop, it's push and then, you know, pop plus check against, you know, thing out of the security cookie and then so forth. Yes? Are you going to talk about the new exception handling mechanism in 64-bit apps? I'm not. That's the thing. Uh, I put that PData question in there and I wanted to get to like actually covering that, but that's part of why it's, why it wasn't in the slides and I kept forgetting to cover it. So no, because I don't know it well enough yet, basically. So until I know it well enough, I'm not going to try to muddle through it. <laughs>